Hello everyone. So today's lecture is about identifying deadlock in our design. So let's learn how to identify deadlock using formal verification. So in this series, we were seeing this particular design for the last two three lectures. So if in case if you you would all know by now that this S one have a condition called deadlock. So deadlock is basically whenever you your F S M cannot be able to progress from a particular state. So in case if you see here. This gets stuck in this particular state, so we need to identify this. So in order to identify this, uh, in uh, system sorry in formal verification, that is a easier method which you can use. You just need to include some two three lines of tickle code uh, for deadlock, live lock, and dead code verification. These are the three lines. So what we are writing here is check superlint in it and then config rtdls, rtlds rule enable tag. This is like dead lock check and then FSM is live lock check. These two things we need to include inside this uh, config RTDL as tag. So, in case if we include this, uh, our dead lock and live lock uh, assertions will be created by the formal tool itself. Uh, let's come back here. If I run now and let's prove the task, so all those assertions are fixed. Uh, we are just interested in knowing about these five things. Let's click prove property. So here, if you see my FSM live lock init prop two is failing, and then uh, FSM deadlock S one is failing. So it's nothing but in if we go back to the design, this particular. So in general, what the Jasper Gold tool will try to do means it will create, it will try to check each and every state have a deadlock or not. And then it will try to run through this entire thing whether it have a live lock or not. So so let's open this um, file. Like let's open the visualizer. So in case if you see here, you can observe that once it goes to S1, but for the next cycles it can't progress anything more. So our Jasper Gold tool identifies this as a deadlock. So this is what we were trying to understand whether the tool is able to do the deadlock, identify the deadlock or not. So this feature will be helpful for you. And this is also able to identify that it have a live lock in S1 also. The reason it have a, a S1 having a live lock is it goes to here and it, it cannot go anywhere and it is go, keep on going to circulate here only. So this live lock is identified. And uh, later let's come back to this design code. Uh, here the design file let's see how to uh, remove this thing so let's uh, write some state like if d or if a or b whatever the num uh, signal is and let's put it to init stage in case if it is now what we are trying to change is in case once you go to this s1 state instead of revolving here go to init stage at a like that we are setting it so we'll set it save it and come back to our design um, let's run this chunk of code now we are interested in these particular things let's capture this and uh, run the property you can observe here that it is passing the reason is uh, we were having issue with this deadlock and live lock because of the state s1 now we tied it to uh, init stage so it is passing now let's understand a little further by creating just a live lock you guys understand a dead lock is very easy in case if it can't go out of the state it it will not go any further but live lock is if it cannot make any meaningful transaction or transition it will create a live lock for example uh, let's now cancel out this b signal which is going out of s2 and then uh, will will make this s2 to stay just between a and a bar only in case if it is transfer traveling just between s2 s3 s2 s3 that is that will create a live lock let's test it out um, coming back to my design file i'm going to keep this s1 as same but in the s2 what we are going to do means we are canceling this s1 thing and then we'll just keep this thing so let's load our file here we are loading our file and we are coming back to our live log problem let's run this 
to property here you can observe that this have a live log the reason is as i told it cannot make any further meaningful transaction it is just going to loop between two s2 and s3 s2 and s3 so this creates a live log uh, and uh, we, which we we are able to capture this also so that's all friends for today's video i hope uh, this will be helpful for you in order to um, like design your fsm and test your fsm and we'll meet in next lecture thank you